Hello there, fellow studio enthusiasts. Uh, this is Hoverick Recording Studio and I'm Ulf. Today I'm going to start working through some of the suggestions I've got uh, a couple of weeks ago when I asked uh, about topics. So today we're going to talk about DIY subkicks. I guess most of you who ever re recorded live drums, acoustic drums, uh, have come across this um, the subkick microphone that looks like a small drum that you put in front of the kick drum to get more low end out of your kick. I'm not sure exactly what the price is of that now, but I'm sure we can get a similar result for a much lower price. Back in the days, I think they used the woofer element from the NS10s to make a subkick. They basically just put the speaker element in front of the kick drum and recorded the signal from that. And uh, since the surface of the speaker is a lot larger than from a regular microphone, it can also pick up uh, more of the lower frequencies. And I think Yamaha is the company that makes the official subkick microphone. But of course, we can make something like this on our own. And it was actually a while back since I tried to do subkicks. Um, I actually never had any really good result with it. But now since I got the question about doing it, I thought I'm going to try it a little bit more. And it actually turned out really good. So probably going to use it in the future. <laughs> So my first attempt was to just take an old um, hi-fi speaker, a ship one. You can probably get one in a second-hand shop uh, for next to nothing. I mean, there is a lot of speakers if you go to the second-hand shops. What I did was I just unscrewed the back of the, of the speaker and disconnected the tweeter because we only want to use the woofer, right? Then I took an old uh, XLR cable uh, that I didn't use anymore. I guess you have some of those laying around. <laughs> uh, so just cut it off, uh, peel, the, peel the cables and uh, put it together. There are two cables coming out from the speaker. And uh, as you know, there are three cables in an XLR. So you take the, the red one from the XLR to one of the speaker cables. And then you take the white one and the shield and put that together with the other cable from the, from the speaker. So I did a couple of test runs. Uh, first, I had the speaker really close to the kick drum, but I noticed that if I pull it a bit back from, from the kick drum, it's you get more low end, also get less of face issues. But you have to experiment with that because you're going to get fa face issues uh, between the regular microphone and this. So try to find a good spot with the least damage. So let's try it and see what it sounds like. So after trying this, I had another idea uh, about uh, the size of the speaker. If it's the size of the speaker that determines how much low end you can get, then I thought if I have a bigger speaker, then I should get more low end out of it, right? So I thought maybe I should take out a speaker of one of my uh, speaker cabinets. But before I did that, I just want to try if it worked. So I took one of the combos with, with two 12 inches. I took the Laney combo. And it turned out that I don't even have to take the speaker out of it. I can just connect the speaker part of it to my mic pre and record it as it is. You get really, really low bottom end and uh, it's really punchy. Um, what I noticed though, if uh, you put it too close to the kick drum, it's gonna like, um, even though you don't overload the mic pre, you're gonna overload the speaker. So it's gonna make those uh, farty sounds. So put it a bit back, record, have a listen and uh, see if you need to change anything. Just to make it really easy, I just uh, took out uh, the cable for the speakers from the amp part and connected it to a line box, which I connected to the mic pre. Got really, really good signal. So let's uh, hear what that sounds like too. And the cool thing with this is that you don't even have to go and buy a secondhand speaker. You can just use one of your guitar speakers as it is. You don't have to buy anything. You just use what you have.
if you want to control the sound of the kick drum more easily, put a high pass and a low pass on each microphone. So you put a high pass on the regular microphone and a low pass on the sub kick. That way there's not as big chance you run into phase issues between the microphones because they work in different frequencies. And I don't think there is much purpose of them overlapping and working in the same frequencies. For me personally, I think it's easier to control it in the mix when they have different purposes. So that's a tip for me. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you find this useful. And uh, if you have any other experiences with this, please share in the comments. Uh, let me know what you think. I hope to see you really soon again. Next video will be out in two weeks. So take care and cheers.